I have recently seen three cases of this condition back to back. All three cases have slightly different clinical presentations, but they're all the same condition. Case number one, a mom was hit by her toddler in the eye. For the next few days, that eye became a little red and light sensitive, accompanied by a foreign body sensation and dull pain. The dull pain became worse whenever she tried to look at something close, like her cell phone or her computer. Case number two, an overall healthy patient saw me for an emergency visit because she woke up in the morning and realized that her vision was blurry in one eye, that I was also visibly red, painful, and light sensitive, so she rushed to my office. Case number three, a patient came in for a routine eye exam and casually told me that his vision sometimes gets blurry and that his eyes sometimes get red with no other eye discomfort. During the eye exam, he also casually told me that he has an autoimmune condition that he didn't put down on his intake form because he didn't think it would be relevant to his eye exam. Hey, Dr. Sunny here. I am an optometrist practicing in North America. Welcome to my channel where we talk about eyes. Back to the stories. All three cases are examples of anterior uveitis, also known as iritis. Anterior uveitis refers to inflammation of the iris, ciliary body, or both. For reference, the iris is the color part of the eye, while the ciliary body is situated right behind the iris. There is also intermediate and posterior uveitis, which affects the pars plana, vitreous, retina, and choroid. But the one discussed in this video, anterior uveitis, which affects the iris and the ciliary body, accounts for over 50% of all uveitis cases, making it the most common form of uveitis. Anterior uveitis is typically acute, unilateral, and idiopathic, meaning that it has a short duration, only affects one eye, and in many cases, the exact cause is unknown. Anterior uveitis can also result from eye trauma, and eye surgery. The symptoms of acute anterior uveitis can be quite uncomfortable and can include blurred vision, light sensitivity, redness, and a dull pain in the affected eye. Some patients with uveitis report that their eye pain gets worse while reading, like in the first case you mentioned earlier. This is likely due to inflammation of the ciliary body, which contains the ciliary muscle, responsible for focusing on nearby objects. When the ciliary body is inflamed, focusing on nearby objects can further irritate it, intensifying the pain. Light sensitivity is caused by a similar mechanism. The iris sphincter muscles contract in the presence of bright light, causing the pupil to constrict to allow less light into the eye. When the iris is inflamed, exposure to bright light still causes it to contract, further irritating it and intensifying the feeling of light sensitivity. These symptoms will become relevant later in the video when we talk about treatments. When examined under a slit lamp, the characteristic feature of anterior uveitis is the presence of cells and flares in the anterior chamber which is the space between your cornea and your iris. The cells are observed by shining a bright light at an angle into the eye. Under high magnification, we can see tiny little dust-like particles that are circulating in the aqueous fluid. These particles are actual white blood cells that have accumulated in the aqueous fluid between the cornea and the iris. In some cases, Protein leakage from the surrounding tissue into the anterior chamber can cause the aqueous fluid itself to appear cloudy, and this is the flare. The accumulation of white blood cells and proteins, cells and flares, in the anterior chamber can obstruct vision, resulting in blurred vision in active inflammation. Anterior uveitis can be associated with systemic disorders. In these cases, the uveitis tend to be recurrent affecting both eyes and oftentimes granulomatous. Under the slit lamp, granulomatous uveitis has dots-like participate on the backside of the cornea called molten fat dots. The duration of uveitis caused by systemic disorders can be acute or chronic. In chronic cases, symptoms may be mild, such as the occasional red eye that does not really cause any significant discomfort so individuals may not actively seek medical attention. As a result, some uveitis cases um, are discovered incidentally during routine eye exams. 
If anterior uveitis is suspected to be linked with a systemic disorder, your doctor may consider sending you for additional lab tests to identify potential underlying causes. Systemic cause of uveitis can be classified into infectious or non-infectious disorders. Non-infectious causes are more common, with nearly 50% of these cases being attributed to a group of autoimmune conditions known as HLA-B27-associated disorders. This group of disorders include ankylosing spondylitis, which causes inflammation of the spine and can lead to lower back pain, reactive arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and inflammatory bowel disease such as Crohn's disease. Some examples of infectious cause of uveitis can include tuberculosis, syphilis, Lyme disease, and much more. It is important to let your diet doctor know if you have any autoimmune disorders or any other systemic health history for that matter, because seemingly unrelated issues can be connected to your eye health. This is why eye doctors ask for systemic health information on the intake form, so don't brush it off. The treatment for anterior uveitis typically involves the use of topical steroid eye drops to reduce eye inflammation. Cycloplegic eye drops are also commonly used. Cycloplegic eye drops work by dilating the pupil and relaxing the ciliary muscles, which helps to reduce pain and inflammation. Dilating the pupils also help to prevent the formation of synechiae. Synechiae happens when the iris sticks to the cornea or the lens during inflammation. This prevents proper drainage and increases eye pressure, which puts you at a higher risk for glaucoma. It is important to note that the cycloplegic eye drops can make your eyes more sensitive to light, so it is recommended to wear sunglasses when going outdoors or in bright indoor environments. Additionally, near vision can be affected due to relaxation of the ciliary muscles, making it difficult to read things up close. A helpful tip is to get low-cost reading glasses from a dollar store to help with close-up vision. If you have good distance vision, you can try plus 2.5 readers. If you are already nearsighted, removing your distance glasses can help with your vision with reading. It is important to follow the prescribed treatment plan for anterior uveitis and attend all follow-up appointments with your eye doctor to monitor for the condition and to adjust treatment when needed. Have you or someone you know gotten anterior uveitis before? How did it feel and how long did it last? Comment below to let me know, I'm curious. Thank you so much for staying to the end. If you find this content helpful, please give it a like, leave a comment, and what eye conditions do you wanna know more? Please let me know. Dr. Sunny, out.